Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you my finished object and this time it's a sweater. However, at the same time, I'm going to tell you how to knit a sweater in a different yarn. And I'm saying here, over here, a weight yarn. And by weight yarn, I'm talking about how thick is the strand you're going to use to knit your sweater. And to be more precise than that, it's a baby sweater though. Okay, let's see what I stick into my plan. And the plan is, first I'm going to tell you about construction of the sweater, size, so checking measurements, and then we'll focus on the math and vital points. Construction. So first things first when you're looking at the pattern uh, is how it is constructed. So is it knitted flat or it is knitted in round? I would say that's the first thing I'm looking at. Because when you're knitting flat, you're knitting pieces. So you need the front, uh, you will have to bind off, you will need the back, you bind off, you need one sleeve, you bind off and another one, you bind off and then you have to sew everything together. And most of the times you would use something like mattress stitch, like a mattress. I think that's how you spell it. Therefore, my best method is to knit in a round, which would be most cases seamless knitting, which would be a seamless construction. So now we have two ways of knitting that way. Either we can knit from the bottom up or from top down. Bottom up would mean that you will knit the body at some stage and then you have to have another needles and then knit one sleeve, then knit another sleeve and then transfer the stitches from the sleeve, front, sleeve and the back as a one piece and you finish the whole thing. The second type is to knit from top down and this is the way I pick up and I like the most because you can try it on if you're knitting for yourself or even if you're knitting for someone else and you have them close by. And so top down means that you cast on first stitches from the color, I hope, I hope I'm saying right, yeah, from the color and then you increasing somehow that's the way it was other way around. You were decreasing. I forgot to mention that. So we're increasing. And then we're putting stitches on hold for the sleeves. And then we're knitting the front and back in a round until we bind off for the bottom. We go back, we pick up stitches for the sleeves, and then we're knitting in a round. And this is the construction I picked. So this is knitted in a round, top down sweater, but that's not all. So obviously you may notice that we're increasing if we're knitting from the top down. So we want to have more stitches around the chest area. And if we're knitting from the bottom up, when we get to this point, we want to have less stitches to go towards the neck. And this section is, I think, called yoke overall. Although sometimes yoke will be related to the, um, a specific way of increasing and decreasing depends the way you're knitting but uh, this type that i have over here is a reglan because we increasing only on two points in this section so the one point on the sleeve and one point on the body and then we'll repeat that over here too so we have two points per section one two for the body one two for the sleeve one two for the back and again one two for the sleeve the rate of increase or decrease, in my case, increase is related to the size you're going to knit and to how long your person that's going to wear a sweater has from the neck, from the shoulder to the armpit. But when we're talking about that, it's not an actual close fit because we have to have always here some material, some fabric, whichever you're knitting or sewing. For us, to be able to move this joint up and down and have proper movements, point that out. So let's say it's around two inches up, so five centimeters up. I hope that makes sense. Pattern that I use, it is a free pattern and on the screen you'll have it written down over here. It's a flat sweater and has many sizes. So I hope you don't mind, I'm going to focus on inches uh, because it's just a smaller number than centimeters. So. Why, why do I say that? Because uh, four inches, that's 10 centimeters. And it's easier to say four than 10. But no worries, if you don't know what the inches are, I just go to Google uh, search. Uh, however, the pattern per se, most of the patterns would include both information. So how many inches you have in, in your bust area, so chest area, and how many centimeters 
is that. So I picked Flax Light Sweater from Tin Can Knits and I wanted to use the fingering but I couldn't decide and I have a bits and bobs of this DK weight yarn and I thought, you know what, it'd be cool to just make stripes. However, the pattern is written down for fingering weight yarn and I have over here DK. Maybe on the screen I'm going to show you a few photos from the pattern per se. Um, it has a nice garter section um, and that's basically it from perspective of texture. It doesn't have lace, it has just plain vanilla so basically that means it's a stock knit stitch. So we're just knitting in around just knit stitches to go as easy as that. So yeah, I did not follow the garter on the sides, I just went with stock knit stitch. So knit stitches. On the screen you have how many how many sizes this pa this pattern has. 17 sizes. And I have a really nice schematics. So on the screen over here. So I'm taking that from the pattern, but it's free pattern, so you can check it yourself to show you what they take for consideration in regards each size. And now the question that I'm asking myself now is that are those measurements are the body measurements or the sweater measurements and each pattern should include information like that so let's check it out so over here it's written down table lists finished garment measurements choose a size based upon your chest bust measurements plus plus desire ease what that means <laughs> That means we have to choose the size that we want to knit. But what you can do, if they have their favorite sweater or any garment, like a t-shirt or something that they feel comfortable in, probably that would be easier for you also to knit sweater for them. Because that's what it says when it says plot desired ease. What that means. If you're looking at the pattern, designers will tell you to go with either negative ease, fitted garment, or positive ease one those means. In my understanding, negative ease is something that it stretches on your body. Fitted garment is that it fits you right. And the positive ease means that the, it's a loose garment. So you have more fabric around your area, so it's very loose. Make sense? Hopefully it does, let me know. <laughs> However, as I mentioned, there are some areas in the garments that you have to have a positive ease so more fabric around that area because we have joints and we need to move those joints. So if you, for example, knit as it fits that area, you may not be able to lift your arm up because we need that extra fabric over that. The table tells us actual sweaters measurements. It is up to us what kind of size we want to pick. Although we have on the side information about the age, I would not even take that for consideration at all. If you're knitting for someone else and it's a surprise, I would suggest also to go with more positive ease. So bigger garment, because that way you will know there definitely will fit into that. At least that's how I understand things and looking at things. So once we pick the sweater we want to knit, and I picked a sweater for the 19 inch bust. And what I wrote down on the side is what it says in that table. So I would need a chest 19 inches, sleeve 7.5 inches, hem to underarm, hem to underarm, six and a half inch, upper arm seven inch. So the only thing that I was missing um, from perspective of the table would be how many, how big is actually the wrist from the arm, because obviously they're not equal sizes. Uh, although if you're knitting a straight arm, straight sleeve, you could do that. That way then you will have kind of more 70s vibe. Maybe not because in 70s you probably even increased, but like a straight sleeve. And then the other one, I was uh, thinking how long is this area? Now, so I think that's all in regards what you're looking at inside the pattern. And there are a few questions that we kind of want to answer. And now we're going into the section where we do our calculations. What kind of yarn are we going to use? And what kind of gauge are we getting with that yarn? Obviously in the pattern there are some suggestions and weights and needle size. They are kind of recommended from perspective for you to start with. But at the end of the day, you are the one who creates the fabric and you have that signature tension with the yarn you're going to use. So my suggestion is for any beginner knitter, if you're knitting a garment for the first time, I would suggest you to knit with the yarn you have already knitted something. Maybe it's a hat, 
maybe a scarf, maybe a shawl, something that you felt comfortable with. You probably know then now the yarn and the needles you use and you can take that knitwear and try to see what kind of gauge you got or you can make a separate swatch for a gauge. So on the screen in this pattern we have information about the gauge and the gauge is written down 24 stitches by 32 rounds and that's how many stitches and rounds we fa find in the square if you measure that little piece four by four inches so 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters and we know from the pattern when we look at the needle information that they got that gauge using a bigger size us size 5 which is 3.75 millimeters these are the informations that are very important if you have a fingering weight yarn and you would want to knit the sweater according to the pattern with the materials that are in the pattern. However, well, I didn't do that. I basically found the yarn that I have in my stash and I wanted to knit a sweater with those dimensions. Therefore, I had to know my gauge, what I'm getting in that little piece of fabric. And because I used over here drop Lima, I knitted a few things with it. So I knew I'm getting 20 stitches using US size six, which is four millimeters. I know it's not the same as the pattern says. So if I want to continue with the number of stitches that the pattern recommends to knit for a certain size, my sweater would be way, way bigger. So now, if you are a beginner, I would say to grab a piece of paper and draw a sweater. It doesn't have to be pretty, as you can see. And what you need to write down over here is a number of stitches that the pattern asks you to have for the size that you picked. And now you would need to read the pattern from the beginning. And before I say anything, at the moment we'll be focusing on the stitches, so the gauge that we get in the four inches. There is also important information about the rounds we're getting, but it will be important for the length for this part. But we'll get that to it in a while. The pattern tells you for my size, which I picked 19 inches, to cast on 96 stitches for the neck. Uh, the pattern says that it, will, it, it has a setup round, let's call it that way, for the next part, which will be to place markers for certain sections. Designer can pick any can pick any point. So just to let you know that that's something can be different in each pattern. So it's very nice if in the pattern, in the brackets, it says what each section, so the numbers of stitches are referring to. And that way, if you play, knit plain vanilla, you can put a progress keeper on the front so that when you will recognize that this is the front of your garment and that's the back of your garment. That's my tip. Okay, let's go back. So now what we're going to do, we're going to check how many stitches per each section we're going to have at the beginning of our reglan. Okay, so beginning of our increases in this case because we're knitting top down. So the pattern tells you that we will have for the, each sleeve, so this sleeve, 18 stitches, 32 for the front, 18 stitches and 32 on the back. So these are the measurements. Okay, check it out now, maybe that will make more sense. Because we're knitting top down, we will be increasing on those four points uh, to uh, this point, where we'll be uh, putting stitches on hold and then knitting in the round just in the center. So we need to know how many stitches now at the end we're going to have in those um, sections before separation. So now we have another stage and it's that stage when we finish knitting in the round and increasing we should have 38 stitches for the sleeve, 52 for the front, 38 for another sleeve and in the back 52. And that stage you're ready to um, separate for the body and knit just the body in the round. And during that time you may notice that the designer is asking you to cast on more stitches in those points where the armpits are. Now, another important information that we have for the garment is the length of the garment. If you have actual person measure that from their armpits down, but sometimes the actual reglan under the yoke we knitting, maybe I'll use a different color. <laughs> How does it look? Good. So now another arrow that I draw over here. This is the distance between the neckline. And now the question is, where do we want that neckline? Is it high or low? That will be also the question. And um, to the point when we have armpits, obviously we know 
that we have to have more fabric under here. Probably that's why we're casting on those stitches too for the movement. Depends of the design of the sweater. It could be higher, it could be lower. Therefore, the distance from the chest area down where we want to allocate our sweater, the bottom of our sweater, could be different in different design. So now would be a really good option for you to put on the sweater and check where it is, knit them a bit, and then see how much more you want before the ribbing. In the pattern ribbing, they stated that they knitted it for one and a half inch. So you can do the same or you can modify it and go a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, at the end of the day, over here, it was written down that this section from the this arrow down, so the body now from the chest down, was for my size that I wanted to knit seven inches. So basically, if it's seven inches and they said that this was 1.5, so we should probably knit over here 5.5 inch or six inch. But this section is for you to put on an actual check. When I knitted this sweater, I asked the person to measure from the collarbone from this. This is, you could see, you could feel ends of two bones over here and down to see where the where they would want the sweater to finish. And that way I could presume that my neckline will end up of that and then how much more I need to knit to reach the number they're saying. In regards to the gauge, you need to be aware do you have a big difference when you have a sweater unblocked or blocked. What measurements you're getting when you're knitting it and then what actual measurement you're going to get when you wash your garment. So we're checking at the instructions and obviously at this point they tell you to knit until you read that number or that length and then you switch probably to smaller needles to finish ribbing and then you bind off. The next stage will be to pick up the stitches for the sleeves and then knit the sleeves. If you don't know how to pick up the uh, stitches, I was asked many times so I recorded on this channel on the screen uh, knit sleeves and basically I'm showing you on this sweater, actual sweater, how I did that, two knit sleeves two at a time. And I would recommend that to beginner to do that, to knit sleeves two at a time because first things first, you don't have a second, so a second sleeve syndrome. Once you knit in those two sleeves at the same time, once you finish that task, your garment is finished. Second of all, the best benefit of that method is that you're knitting them at the same time. So if you do something in one sleeve, you repeat that with another one, so that way they are identical. So during that pickup for the stitches, what you will notice is that you have stitches on hold and you have an area that it looks like an edge because we have casted on certain number of stitches. So now we're going to pick up that number too while we're putting the stitches on the needles with those extras. Therefore now, this, the sleeve is not 38, but plus eight will be 46. Therefore, what we need to check, and normally in the pattern it says how many stitches we have for the ribbing, but this pattern doesn't. This pattern will only tell us the ratio, how we're going to increase how we're going to decrease. Therefore, this is what happens. We had 38, we added eight, we have 46 stitches. We know that we have to minus two stitches per round. It happens mostly at the beginning and at the end. So one is at the beginning, we minus one, and at the end of the round, we minus one. So that's two stitches that we will have less in the round. And then we're going to knit six according to this pattern, six rounds. Therefore, let's sum up 38 stitches, we adding those eight, so we're picking up eight stitches, we have 46 stitches at the beginning, we're going to decrease the round, then knit certain number of rounds that many times, two stitches multiply by number of overall that you have to decrease, gives us six stitches overall. Therefore, 46 minus 6 gives us 40 stitches. So that's the number the design wants for the ribbing in a sleeve. Okay, so we have 40 stitches for the ribbing in the sleeve. So now once you have that and you have those stitches, you can now use the beauty of the math and know how many stitches you need in certain sections for your sweater to get the same sweater. In the brackets in black, you have the stitches done. I have to have for my gauge 20 stitches. 
I haven't done the calculations for the ribbing over here, so I'm going to do that with you to show you how did I do all of that. Okay, few words over here. The thing that I'm going to show you is something that my mom taught me. And when I had math class in regards percentage, I did not really get that from perspective of how to calculate that, how to get information. So my mom taught me this method, which apparently is a chemical method, comparing two two related informations to each other. I'm not a math teacher, so I'll do my best. Although it should be chemistry teacher. I'm not either in that, so. Right, obviously you don't need a full page like this to do the crisscross things, but I'm going to show you over here what the idea behind this it is. Normally what I did, I did something like this, a slight messy on the piece of paper, but I normally do that on Excel sheets and it's even easier. I'm designing my first sweater and that's why also this video is about, so hopefully I will refer to it for anyone who'd want to. Modify to change something, understand things better. It's an actual piece that I was working. So basically instead of doing this, I did this. I wrote down the uh, areas, I wrote down the gauge, uh, 24 stitches and wrote down what the the design was and then I wrote down 20 over here and wrote down now what I had to get. So basically this side of the table was filled in. I did not know only this. So I know two informations that we have 24 stitches and 20 stitches. So this side will be the information from the pattern and this side is my information so I need to do. For this to work you need to fill in three out of four and the one is a question mark. So far what we know that we have a gauge and the pattern gauge is 24 stitches. My calculations for my pattern, the garment that I'm knitting or the needles and yarn that I have is 20 stitches. So the, these are the informations. Now in the bottom we want to know, we know only one thing, how many stitches certain section has. Let's check do I have those calculations right? The pattern tells us 96 stitches. So we have 96 stitches for the neckline. And as you can see, we don't know the number over here. So what we're going to do now, it's quite simple. We're going to multiply this number with this number. So crisscross, is that a crisscross? Uh, and divide it by the one that doesn't have the partner on the opposite side. 96 multiplied by 20 equals and now we divide it by 24 and it's 80 so that's 80 stitches so i would say go have fun pause and check all my other calculations did i do them right and then let's focus on the so now i wrote down 40 stitches so we go 40 stitches by 20 divided by 24 gives us 33.333, right? So what the heck I'm going to do now? Basically, when you get something like this, you need to ask yourself a question, what kind of ribbing are you going to do? If you're going to do one by one rib, then your number of stitches has to be dividable, hope I'm saying this word right, by two. If you're doing two by two rib, then your stitches has to be the dividable by two. Four, because otherwise if they're just by two and if you're doing two by two ribbing so two knits two purls then you will end up with two knits at the end and then you will have four four knits in the middle which is fine it could be your designed idea so now we know that in the pattern from 46 stitches we're dropping to 40 stitches to the wrist so six stitches we need to lose somewhere of our calculations we get 38 stitches and we're dropping it let's say to 32 which means that we're dropping six stitches too if i go to 34 then i'll drop just four so that's that my way of thinking would be if i'm knitting for myself i could go to 32 and put the hand and see how fitted it is because when we're pulling the sleeve through your arm, you have to make sure that it passes your hand. So even though this is thinner, this is wider, and it has to go through this. I would go 34. So my calculations, it was 33.333, 33 I go to 34. Better to be safe than sorry. Better to go more than less. And in that, in my calculations from 30 or 38 for my sweater, I have to drop it to 34 in my sweater. So I'm talking about 
four stitches decrease and we know we do decrease two stitches per round so I have to squeeze two rounds over here somewhere to decrease it and now if I want to have straight forward nicely flow I try to do it in a kind of the same space so I to try to space it out through the fabric or if I want to have more bulky over here and drop it to narrow I can do it straight away row round after round but this depends how what kind of shape you want to achieve in this type of sweater reglan sweater there are three actually sections in the garment knitting that you would need to know your rounds gauge as i mentioned this is the one so the length length of the neckline to the split for armpits second one would be the shape of your sleeves if you want to maintain the way the sleeves look in the pattern you would want to do those calculations too unless you want to uh, do your own thing your own shape you can kind of omit it and place the in the creases whatever you want and that way you will get the shape of the sleeve you want the next one the third one uh, that i did not do and did not include uh, but you can is the shaping for your waist first less material and then more material for the hips right so this is what we're playing with and the main question we need to ask ourselves is how much length we have to do all those changes okay let's start with the shaping for our sleeves remember this this is what we were doing when we were calculating how many stitches we will have after decreasing for certain section we took the ratio of decrease over here and we got that information from perspective of stitches so now we're going to use the same thing and take information from perspective how many rounds the designer used so what kind of section the designer used to decrease those stitches in so we're talking about certain section and certain number of decreases okay you remember our play so we have a gauge over here and this is a pattern 32 rounds the gauge our one is 28 we know another information and we put it under the pattern section that designer used 21 rounds two informations and one information those two relates to one garment those two relates to another garment 21 multiplied by 28, remember we're crossing, and then we divide it by 32. That gives us 18.3. So now I wrote down 18.3 because that will give me information when I eventually specify my number of rounds from perspective of how many um, decreases I need to do per that section. So as you can see inside over here, I created the same story. Do you see it? I have my cross over here. So now I know that 32 rounds in the pattern gives four inches. So how many inches will give 21 rounds? It gives 2.6 inches. So if you need that information for some reason, uh, you can definitely do that too. For the sleeve section, we may need that information because we know that in the pattern, the sleeves measures so now, in the table on the screen, you could see that this should all be 7.5 inches. We know the ribbing is 1.5, so this section should be 6 inches. Am I right? So up till this point, we should measure how long the sleeve is. So once we finish up to this point, we will know how long this section is. And we will know that we need to knit enough to reach six inches. And if we, if we go back to our calculations in regards to rounds, we will know that this section, when we decreasing, is 2.6 inches long. And the same thing we will get from our crisscross calculations in the 18, ra 18 rounds over here, 21 round over here. So when you get to this point, when you have to start knitting sleeves, ask yourself a question, how long you have still to do? And will those two and a half inches will be around the area you want those decreases to take place? Mostly in the sleeve sections, we knit flat for a bit because we have one bone and we have another bone. <laughs> and normally this section is the same Shaping is different in this section. 
However, as you may notice, I hope you can see it, I made this those uh, decreases higher. No worries, it may look and be visible uh, when you have a um, sweater put flat, but when you're wearing it, this is actually under your arm and you will not see the difference. And because going smaller over here, it did not make such a big difference, but you could take that for consideration when you modify it for your sweater. So yeah, in regards to rounds, most of the times designer wants to decrease in this section, so let's say two, 0.6 inches equally through this length. For instance, I know that in my calculations, I have to decrease four stitches overall, which means two rounds. Why? Because in each round, I decrease two stitches. In those 18 stitches, I need to find two rounds that I will decrease, and the other 16 rounds, I will just knit plain. So it's up to me to decide uh, where I want to place it. Sleeve section. In the pattern uh, we have 46 stitches, we go to 40. So 46 stitches to 40, that gives 6 stitches. The pattern wants to have a ratio of 3 because in 3 rounds we will decrease 6 stitches. One round that's 2 stitches decrease. Therefore, a designer had to do 21 rounds to get this length and this is what they had to do. With our case, we have 38 stitches, we go to 34, we have four stitches that we have to decrease. Remember that two stitches are per one round, so we need two rounds to decrease, therefore one decrease, one eight rounds knit, that give us nine, multiply by two, give us 18 stitches, which what we decided to do. I hope this video will give you a glimpse why we have stitches, why we have rounds, and what we can do with them to create a fabric, and how many of those we need in the garment to shape the way we want it to shape, or we want to recreate the sweater that was shaped that way. Yeah, I hope the storm did not bother you so much. Sorry for the sound in case you can hear that. And then if you have any ideas for the more videos in the future, if you did not understand some section that I was trying to explain the best I could, write it down, down below and maybe I will record a next one. Any ideas, any questions, leave me a comment down below and thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy that. And definitely give me a thumb up for the effort that I put over here. I try to explain it the best I can.